Dual Review is brought to you by Nexus, digitalcomics.com. Welcome to Dual Review. We have an excellent week for you, starting off with uh, Elephant Men for our comic, followed by our video game Rock of Ages. It's not ours, but we're going to be reviewing it. And then on, uh, on our focal point, we're going to be taking a look at all the wonderful things that we have on our site now. That's right. Also for our anime this week, it's Pumpkin Scissors, available on Netflix. And we're going to end off the week with a movie called Door to Door. Great movie. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Today is Monday the 4th of June already. Holy crap. Now we're going to be talking about a great comic, Elephant Men. That's right. And it started off in 2006, and it's actually ongoing. Um, we do have several omnibuses. You've seen them in the stores. <laughs> now I get a review. There's, there's two more that I brought with yeah, me. Yeah, I think people are uh, intimidated. They are. They're, they're, they're the, huge. The vastness. They're huge. Uh, but, but They're cheap, you know, like each one. Yeah, really. The, but, the, the first one was 20 but the other ones are 25 Well, yeah, probably not. If you, Well, whatever. Uh, you can find them online for much less than that. Of course, we say, you know, support your local guy. Uh, yeah. But you can also get them digitally, which I'm thinking of, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, why don't you tell us about a little bit more about Elephant Man? Okay, uh, well, Elephant Man is actually, uh, I guess, an offshoot of Hip Flask, which was its own series for a while, but it, it graduated into Elephant Man, where it talks about more than just Hip Flask. Hip Flask being more or less the main character. I don't know how to say that. Um, Hip Flask is an anthropomorphized, is that a word? Uh, hippopotamus, uh, so he's like half man, half hippo. Uh, thank you. No, that's actually technically not him. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's technically a, uh, whatever. <laughs> Let me start over. It's, it's written by, it's, uh, the writer is Richard Starkings, and the art is by Moritat and others, and, uh, it's actually wonderful art. I absolutely love the art. Yeah, except for the and others guys. I think that's who did the third one, and I'm not too thrilled about that. But... Uh, I, don't know. I thought it was pretty awesome. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, this. it's cool art. And There's some pretty cool stuff. I don't know if you can see this. It yeah, it's pretty dark. dark. But, uh, you know, sure. uh, it, it's another one of those, like, we just came off of talking about some of Neil Gaiman's stuff. Yes. And how we talked about how he embraces things that are cliche, but then he puts a new spin on it so they don't feel cliche. Right, right. And I, I had the same feeling reading these. Good. Uh, you know, it's like the government, whatever, the secret, whatever, hi, uh, hybrid genetic, blah, blah, blah. But it's it's really right. different and you see the heart and soul of these characters and you know some of them are very relatable and likable and then others are kind of and th but there's kind of weird things you know in there that i'm not sure i jive with um okay i'm gonna probably touch upon that yeah but uh i really enjoyed it um I guess now is a good time to say that uh, in these trades, even though they're huge, they're massive, the pages are very thick. So yeah. uh, even though it looks like a huge trade, I think there's still only like six or seven issues. Yeah, I think there's there, right? seven. Here, this one this one collects 16 through 23, so what is that? Uh, that's about seven. Four, yeah, seven. Um, so uh, in fact, when I was doing research on my own about this... Uh, is it still going? Yes, it is. Yeah, and they've only gotten to like 37 or something. Uh, yeah, it's I think, a very low no, number. I think, I think they're up to 39 now. But anyway, yeah. So, I mean, you look at these and you think, oh, it's like 100 issues or something. So, so no. And the artwork, they're very fast reads. Oh, uh, and the, the omnibuses also have like uh, big back areas where they, you know, show like, uh, well, that's a Star Trek thing that's, you know, that has nothing to do with it. Um, but, <laughs> okay, this one doesn't have it. Uh, it just has some filler stuff in the back. But, but a lot of them is uh, just some cool artwork. Here, this one has it. Now, you see how he's opening the Omnibus? This is nothing I wanted to talk about, about the Omnibus, is uh, he bought these, and he, he was stupid enough to let me borrow them. And I promptly, like, ruined this first one because the binding is so stiff. Yeah. If you try to open it anywhere, like, past 45 degrees, it weakens the binding. So, yeah, so now so I have... Popped uh, out. And I literally was reading them like, like this. Like, I wouldn't even let them fall, but... Yeah, I just, I'm sorry, dude. It's all right. It's all right. You know, that... I really wish they would fix that. And I've, I've had the, we're going to be reviewing Hack and Slash uh, next week. And I had the same um, comments about the omnibuses of those is that they're great value, although some of them are kind of pricey right now. Um, but the bindings just fall apart. If you, if you read them more than once and if you are aggressive, if you're like me and I want to see all the page, I mean, imagine that. I want to see the whole page. 
uh, you can't really do that. Like, literally, I had to position myself <laughs> near the light or the window where the light was r directly over me so I could see down into the crevices because you literally, like, open it and then... Yeah, yeah like, you don't do want to open thing. it all the way because the binding is just going to crack. So that's a neg very big... Ne like, seriously, like this. Like, that's how much you, you read it like this. And then you read it like that, and you flip. It's just it's it is it is a problem, but very I, I, irritating. I mean, it's not enough to destroy the story because the story is awesome. Yeah, and the yeah. art is cool. And I, but and again, I, I want to see all. Of I like I, I do like the imposing size of them, especially for a title called Elephant Men. To see this on my bookshelf here, let me put let me put these three. It's not together. worth it. I I don't think so. I think this is awesome. You know, I so I so don't think it's worth it. And, and it plus is cool though. I will. I think admit there's two more. Cool. One that I don't yeah, have. There's and double zero. zero and, yeah, there's double zero. Which which has actually came out recently. It's yeah, right. It it contains like before stuff, but also yeah some of the later issues so anyway uh uh and before we go on to more story uh it is available digitally and it's very cheap digital too so if you're kind of trepidatious i would definitely i mean there's nothing like having the hard copy yeah and you can't support your you know your local guy if you're buying it digital but uh if you're kind of like me i think i might buy them digital just because i can appreciate the art and it might be one of the few that i actually have on digital and nothing else i don't know because they don't come in smaller trades that i know right I no, I don't so. believe so. No. You could maybe hunt down the original uh, issues, but I have I have the impressive. original first um, first issue of Elephant Men that came out in two thousand six. Yeah, which is which is the eight for me. So anyway, that's enough about the the right. Let's the, move on to plot. Story, yeah. <clears throat> so plot wise, uh, I think this is set like two hundred years in the future or something. Doesn't really matter. It's set in the future. It's very kind of Blade Runner feel to it. Um, <clears throat> there's an organization called. Uh, Mapo, M A P P O, right? M A P P, yeah, M A P P O. That is led by Dr. Nikon, who is a Japanese uh, egomaniac, crazy person, uh, who basically takes African women, impregnate, impregnates them with these embryos that are hybrids of man and, and beast, and then after they give birth, because you know they're so big that I mean the children are so big that you know they can only give one birth, he pretty much takes the bodies and throws them in a, in into a into a, a, like a mass grave and <clears throat> there's like something like 10,000 um elephant men so that's a lot of freaking women who were just like used in the yeah, front away if correct me if i'm wrong but all the species are very you know african or yes they, they are as a matter of fact i think there's only several uh, species which is the zebra and yeah the zebra the giraffe the camel the uh elephant crocodile the crocodile and the hippopotamus and i think that's rhino it. oh and the rhino that. sorry yeah so I, I think, think that's, that's it. I think that's I mean, there's it. some others that show up in the comic, but that's not really. I mean, in comic inside the comic. Right. But anyway. Right. Uh, okay, that's that's interesting. Uh, there's a lot of symbolism of kind of like the government, like a a too powerful government, and like because like this whole thing of you know all we ask is that you're silent and let us do our thing. You know what I mean? Like because all the horrible things that we do, if you turn a blind eye, you know, hear Are no you... no hear no see no evil, you know, kind of thing. Then, then you'll progress and and. Are you talking about Mapo or? Yeah, yeah. More okay. Or less, yeah. Ma Mapo, Mapo is, Mapo is separate from, the government. Okay, there was this, there was this war, and I don't want to delve too far into it because the comic actually really doesn't. It just says that it happened, and essentially these elephant men were were. I think that's in zero, double zero. But anyway. Uh, el these elephant men were bred to be soldiers, and they were brainwashed by Nikon to. You know, just not think for themselves. They are just a tool to be used. Um, it's in very war. Weapon X. Because yes. they're depraved and they're, you know, constant stimuli and like negative, you know, like right. pain. And... Right. And they've also been genetically uh, engineered to withstand like like uh, poisons and, and diseases and gases. And they're subjected to these things to build up the immunities. In fact... One so much so that he he goes insane. His name is Tusk, and you'll and you'll read oh, about right, him. Oh right, yeah. So we forgot warthogs, right? And warthogs, yeah. I guess we did forget warthogs. Um, and so and so the war kind of finishes, um, and the Allied forces come over. I think it's just the UN. I think they're called, or you know, I think it's the UN who does it. Um, they come over and they try and. They they free the elephant men and they rehabilitate them and then they push them out into uh, regular life where they're not really accepted. They're thought of as you know war machines because they are and they're they're greeted with fear and, and you know loathing. Mm -hmm. um, and most of them gain jobs in government. You know uh, uh, the two the two main characters that we more or less follow is Hip Flask the hippopotamus and Ebony Hyde the elephant who work for the intelligence agency i believe it's called with the zebra dude with the zebra dude whose name is trench um 
And so it follows, it mostly follows Hip Flask, and, and each issue has kind of like two stories. One is directly related to a character, you know, so one of the elephant men, and then the other half of the story is usually Hip Flask searching for this artifact. Uh, I think it's an African artifact, and I don't really know its significance. They don't really talk about it that much, they just say that he's going after it. So that, that kind of makes the whole thing a little bit disjointed. Like, I always complain about that. Yeah. Whereas, like, you, you turn the page, you start a new whatever, and it's like, wait, wait, what? Yeah, what's and happening? They also do this thing, like, the comic, like we mentioned before, a comic within the comic. So yeah, like, or a story within like, a story. Like, uh, yeah, Flask is uh, on space or something, you know, in space and doing his thing. And, right, but I, I like those because it yeah, kind of... Yeah, they're, they're fun. They yeah. just kind of disrupt the flow of the other story. What I don't understand is... is he, he makes it very clear that the public is viewing Hip Flask as more or less the spokesperson. You know, he's the, he's the stereotypical elephant man, even though he's not an elephant. And I don't even know why they call them elephant men if they're not all elephants, but whatever. Um, so, so they really focus on Hip Flask as opposed to Obadiah Horn, who is like the most successful elephant man. Yeah, yeah. He, has, he has taken what he knows and, and built up an empire and, you know... And his story is, is kind of interesting, and this is one of the things that I think you have a problem with, um, in that he is very much in love with this woman who is named um, Sahara. Sah Sahara, like the Sahara Desert. And uh, she is very much in love with him, but their, their, their love doesn't really, you know, people see it as a bad thing, obviously, because, you know, they're prejudiced or whatever. And I know that you have a lot of problem with that, not because of the implications that it's implying, you know, where, you know, people should be uh, uh, seen as people and not different races or whatever, you know, it's a very uh, microcosm for prejudice altogether. What you have a problem with is the simple fact that it's bestiality more or less. Inner, inner species. Yeah. I'm just uncomfortable with it. It's, yeah. I don't think that it's, it's you know, it's not glorifying that or anything. It's just a simple, like I can look past that and see that it's, you know, it's just about a story about outcasts and whatever. Right, but and people who, who... Seriously, even on just kind of like a funny level, like seriously, this, this is the two of them. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, you see the size of his fingers? Yeah. How how would that work? I it wouldn't. I don't I don't think that they actually have sex. I think it's a strictly love relationship. I don't even think she wants Well, then to have that's a beautiful tear, but they certainly they certainly insinuate with with that dumb bimbo that's always like, "Oh, he's so big. I mean his size. I mean his arms, you know." So he's talking about um Mika or Mika and well, part Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. I don't know. Part part of how they sell the series though is like it's like well, it's got awesome battle scenes. It's got lots of hot women and stuff. And I really didn't. There's not a lot of women. In no, there's not. I don't know they, why they, really they don't use capitalize that as a, on that. As, well, I, whatever. I don't think they should necessarily. But yeah. It's really more about the elephant men, and you know, it's just, you know, it does a good job of establishing their outcasts. It's just a little creepy. That's yeah. all I'm saying. That's all. Yeah. So, so it just makes me a little uncomfortable. That's all. Especially in today's you know day where there's like marry a horse, no problem. Go ahead, you know, do your thing. What? They've had news stories about, you know, guys trying to marry horses. Oh, and, I read you know, one about the guy marrying his dog. It's all that stuff. And it's like, oh, no, it's, you know, it's platonic or whatever. It's just because I love him so much. I just want to, you know, whatever. It's Why? Just, I don't it's understand. It's just creepy. That. I don't yeah, know, whatever. Creepy. Maybe they just want tax breaks out of it. I, I don't want kind of government no, tax no. breaks you give for marrying your dog. But. <laughs> the way 10% off Alpo. The way I see it, you should marry any sentient being that you want. If it is okay. self, if, it, if, if it is self-aware and, and can speak for itself. Does that, does that count as sentient? So on a quick aside, uh, one of the things that I don't think that they capitalized on very well was um, within the stories, every now and then an elephant man will be interviewed. Uh, Obadiah Horn was interviewed, and then the crocodile, what's his name, Elijah something. Did I write it down? I did not. That's stupid to me. Yeah, but the crocodile, I don't think Howard he's... Howard Stern character. Yeah, by the Howard Stern character. Uh, that yeah. And they don't really ask the questions that us as readers would want to know. Um, you know, I mean, there were so many more questions that they could have, um, you know, found out, but they just didn't. And I, and I, and they usually, the, the interviews always ended in, in the elephant man getting angry and more or less frightening the interviewer. So, so I don't know. That, that's something that they missed. But anyways, moving on to the humans involved. Vanity Case was, uh, in Hip Flask, the comic, and rolled over into this here and there, um, so, yeah, it's unfortunate, but you don't actually get to see a lot of her because she is an interesting character. She's a Hip Flask's a part. Uh, I want to say Hip Flask's hip partner. I just can't. Hip Flask's partner um, in the Information Bureau or Intelligence Bureau. Intelligence Bureau, I think it's called. So, uh, so there's that. <laughs> and there's Sahara, who is uh, Obadiah's wife. Um, 
Then you have Savannah, a little girl who looks up to uh, Ebony Hyde, the elephant. And then there's... Who am I missing? Oh, Miki. Miki, who's in love with Hip Flask because she loves muscles and he's bound with them, I guess. Yeah, muscles. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and then there's the bad guy, Serengeti, who hunts elephant men to kill them, even though... Oh, I don't want to give that away. Let's just leave it at that. There's a lot of very interesting, you know, back and forths in there, a lot of tie-ins, very, very... I, I, it's a great story. I really do dig it. Yeah, the and the the palette's really dark. The tone is fairly dark, although they do have that broken up, you know, like the space, you know, right, right, Flask right, in space and stuff. Or, like or the pirate one. And then they change the art. Did we show them that? Uh, well, they they do, but they don't. Um, because again, they it is they it do. is mostly Mortet. And in palette this one, is all like pastelly and washed. Yeah, out. in this one, but it kind of fits the story. And then right after that, let's see, they get right back into the non pastel stuff. They just have to kind of find it. See, over here, it's not pastel. Past pastel. Yeah, because I had pasta this morning. Pasta. It's not pastel anymore, and it's back to being gritty and gross and noir, which is awesome. Oh, yeah, that, there was some of the... See, see some of the cool drawings. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a lot, a lot of these books I have problems with when they change artists. In fact, hash, hack, hack Slash is going to be one of those that I have problems with. But, uh, yeah, anyway, very solid. I, I'm... I'm going to check them out digitally, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, I still have all... I'm still going to be getting all of the omnibuses if you want to read them, or unless you truly really don't want to. <sighs> I'm so, so scared I'm going to break one again. But what, what's very interesting about these series is is the implications that it can give off, you know, the, uh, the, the, the morals, the ethics that kind of revolve around it, the fact that they were brainwashed, and now that they're not, you know, are they still... Do they have, still have these tendencies, and... And, uh, I mean, I'm telling you, Ebony, when he gets mad, he, he gets mad. That'll that'll slightly tie into our Pumpkin Scissors one. Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's it for Elf Man. Yeah, I think so. All right, check it out. Uh, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, tell us what you think. Uh, check us out on nexusdigitalcomics.com. Uh, and remember to buy our wares at spiderwolf.com. We have t-shirts, uh, card game. Short stories. Short stories. Art prints. Art prints. And more coming. We have Kickstarter projects. Right, and, uh, Kickstarter projects. Yeah, we've hit a little bit of a speed bump with the with the relaunch of the website, but uh, it will be up soon, and we have lots of new content, lots of new shows, and we'll be telling you on Wednesday. Yep, we will. Just check us out shows. on Wednesday. So, All right, see you guys. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh. Uh, I was nice to let you have the first shot. Well, we both missed one. Yeah. Matter. See you later. Next up on Dual Review, it's Rock of Ages. Beautiful, 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 beautiful boy. <laughs> What's that from? No idea. My dreams. What? <laughs> it's from um, Mr. Holland's Opus. He sings oh. that to a deaf kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And it made me cringe when you said, Beautiful boy. Whatever you did. I might have to borrow these from you. Creepy. I was very fluid in that. And we're very excited about this week's Pokemon. Point. Gonna beat the shit out of it. Apparently. Welcome to Dual Review. We have an excellent week for you. Starting with on Monday. Starting with on Monday. Starting with Monday and following with Tuesday. Wednesday's a great day. Don't miss it. Thursdays or Friday Eve. Don't sleep through it. Welcome to Dual Review. We have an excellent week for you. Starting off with our comic, Elephant Men, followed by our video game, Rock of Ages, and then our on our on our, on our, on our, on our, on our profile number. Welcome to Dual Review. We have an excellent week for you. Starting off with our comic on Monday, uh, Elephant Men. Today. Today. Today is the fourth. Welcome to Monday the fourth. Because this, I guess, means fourth. <laughs> One, two, three, four. That's right. You just gotta. Oh, up. I totally made up. Yeah. <laughs> what's this? That's four. <laughs> no, what's that? That's four. It's a unicorn. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay. Invented. That is invented. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought you were doing this, which is foreign binary on your hand, if you remember, I should do that. That's being no, one, was... three, four, so eight, six, ten. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> so yeah, as far as, as far as the humans are involved, 
Uh, there's Vanity Case, who is Hip Flask's hip partner. <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny for me. <laughs> okay.